I'm sure Marshall will share his truth when he's ready. Am I really hearing you say this, Auntie? Because you never had such a liberal view of truth-telling when you were raising us. Didn't I? Absolutely not. Look, if my memory serves me correctly, your stance on honesty was pretty cut and dry. Lessons are made simple for children. Everyone here is grown. Curtis, I know. I can't take credit for the man you are today, but I can thank your aunt for her part in it. In my absence, she made sacrifices. She took responsibility for my family. Girl, I owe you. We all did our best at the time. Aunt Stella, how could you say that? We don't know what this man did after he abandoned his family. Curtis. Aunt Stella, I'm sorry, okay? Out of respect for you, I allowed this man a chance to say his piece, but he's saying nothing. So, sir, could you please leave? And this time, make it for good? I won't tell you again. Get out of my club. And stay out of my life. Take care of yourself, Stella. Marshall, stop. Curtis, I know your father's reappearance in your life has thrown you. That man hasn't been my father for a very long time. He has always been your father. Whether he's been around or not, whether you like it or not, this is Marshall Ashford is the only father that you have. And by some miracle, he's standing here, whole and well. So what do you suggest, Auntie? That we just pick up where we left off? I'm a little too old for toy lawnmowers. I'm not saying that at all, baby. But what has it cost Marshall to show up here? Maybe you could have just at least hear him out. He has nothing to say. He's a ghost with no public record who makes sketchy references about some unexplainable danger. Curtis. Curtis, hear me. Just hear me. As much as it killed me to go, every minute I remained in your lives, I put you, I put Tommy at risk. How had I stayed? What kind of father would that have made me?